All right, let's get into it. I'm Andrew Yang. Joyce Lynn Taylor. My name is Aaron Foldenauer. Eric Adams. Diane Morales. Fernando Mateo. Scott Strayer. Catherine Garcia. Curtis Schliwa. Maya Wiley. One love. It's Paperboy Prince, Paperboy Love Prince. I'm Art Chang. Sean Donovan. I'm Ray McGuire. And I'm running for the mayor of the greatest city that exists on this planet, New York City. First job in New York. It was the day after I turned 14, I became a cashier at the Big R supermarket. Dishwasher in the restaurant. The chemical bank, summer intern. I mean, my first real job was working for then assembly member Jerry Nadler. Your first first job? I mean, I had odd jobs. I mean, I was uh, a stock boy at Macy's. It was, it was great when I came as borough president to meet with the head of Macy's and told them I worked there and everyone was trying to figure out, you know, was he one of the executives at Macy's? And I said, no, I was the, I was the stock guy in the basement. It was fun. I was a stock boy at a baby furniture store. I guess my first job here was as like an intern at a law firm after I arrived here for law school. Um, but my first job in New York State, since I grew up not that far from here, was as a busboy at a Chinese restaurant, the Imperial Walk, uh, in my teens. And I was a busboy because my Chinese was too weak to translate written orders to the kitchen staff. <laughs> so, but I made up for it other ways, I think. You know, it was handy. Ha, <laughs> paper, yeah. Paper boy, of course. That was my first job. I've, I, I can talk about some other jobs, too. Paper boy, reporter, dog walker. Uh, I work for the New York State Division of Housing. I moonlighted as an architect from 6 p.m. to midnight, five days a week in Williamsburg in 1985. Came here as a summer associate at a law firm right after law school. Delivering the daily news. How will you reform the NYPD? 40% of calls to 911 are not for crimes. They're for mental health episodic issues in the streets, or wellness issues, quality of life issues. And we have got to stop sending an overheated police uh, intervention in so many of these calls. We got to keep the police doing what they're supposed to do, which is making sure that they're fighting the gun violence in the neighborhoods that have the most crime. And then the mayor has to build out a system where appropriate response is coming to our communities. We also have to invest in our children to keep them away from the criminal justice system. There is no reforming the NYPD. We tried it once, we tried it twice. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Right now, we need to turn the police into a love team. Completely abolish the police, transform them, and turn them into a love team that focuses on de-escalation. The NYPD certainly needs reform, but in the area of reform, it's not to defund. What you gotta do is not only refund, hire more cops, and maybe train them in a little different style, I would certainly give some advice since I've been on both ends of the parameter. I've got my fair share of wooden shampoos, concrete facials from the cops when they thought I was the Hells Angels. But I also know how we've done wrong to the heroes and turned them into zeros. So there's a, a balance. Uh, the NYPD uh, is an organization whose culture needs to evolve and change. And I've proposed two big ways to help the NYPD evolve. Number one is to have a civilian police commissioner the fact is, if you want a culture to change, the change starts at the top. And we can see at the national level where you have defense agencies that are run by a civilian. We should be looking at the same thing here in New York. The second thing is new police officers should live in New York City. We already require this of agency employees in other parts uh, uh, of the city. And I think that people would agree that police are all the more important and vital in terms of understanding the communities that they're serving and protecting. Plus, you'd have new police officers living in the city and commuting within the city every day. They would understand our uh, neighborhoods all the better. I will transform the NYPD first by significantly divesting in the funding from the NYPD and investing in communities so that we can move towards actually reclaiming and redefining what public safety really means because public safety is not policing. For too long we had conflated those two things and the reality of it is that communities that are most heavily policed are actually the ones that report the most harm at the hands of police. And we know that communities that are in fact safer are communities that are rich in resources, programs, and opportunities 
for community members. Well, we have to take fun money from the NYPD and we have to invest it in communities because the reality of the situation is policing is a, a reaction to the things that we haven't done on the other end to create different dynamics in communities. If we invest in communities in a proactive manner, we'll see more people that are able to live whole and purposeful lives and we'll see a decrease in crimes. And I think that's the way that we do it. To do reform the NYPD, there are three things I would do. The first thing I would do is fix the governance system, remove the sole disciplinary powers of the police chief, second, have a truly independent civilian complaint and investigation body, and an, an, an independent adjudicatory body. The second thing is to be able to demilitarize the police, create an unarmed response set of responders who can go in and actually respond to the 94% of 911 calls that do not require armed intervention. And the third thing that we have to do is to think about what it means to have safety in our community. Instead of thinking only about the response to violence, let's think about the prevention of violence and think about the inputs that actually create the healthy communities that create safety for everybody. We need better policing. As a 6'4", 200-pound black man, I want the police to protect me, not profile me. We need better policing. Do we need more cops on the street or fewer? We have a police department that Mayor Bloomberg bragged would be seventh in the world if it were an army. We simply do not need an army over policing, particularly black and brown communities. And when I am mayor, I will right size it. Uh, reinvest dollars into ensuring that we're making it easier to get a job than a gun and making sure we have the appropriate mental health services so that we're no longer criminalizing poverty but rather focusing policing on things like keeping illegal guns out of our city and off our streets. We need more cops on our streets, especially now coming out of these seven or eight years of Bill de Blasio. We certainly need to beef up our men and women in blue and give them the support that they need to make every New Yorker feel safer when they go outside. I think we could actually operate with fewer cops. We have more cops per person in New York City than any city in the country. But what we need to make sure of is that it's not just the number, it's what they're actually doing every day. And that's why I say we have to reduce what they're focused on to really make sure that their main mission is guns and violent crime. I do not say defund the police because I believe that is bad politics. That being said, I believe that we need to look carefully at the budgets of each and every city agency, and that includes the NYPD. How much weed do you smoke? Uh, Y'all ask this to all the candidates? I smoke zero weed regularly. Zero. How much weed did I smoke? Way too much. I don't smoke weed. Just look at the marks on my fingers. <laughs> I do not smoke weed. Weed makes me paranoid. I'm a mom, yo. I'm like, no, we glad it's legalized, but not happening under my roof. I've had medical marijuana and used marijuana because I've had chronic Crohn's disease. None. And it works enough that I can run New York City. I prefer edibles. Every mayor promises to solve the homelessness crisis and no mayor has done it. Why do you think you can? I'm committing right now, you can quote me on this, to reduce street homelessness in New York City by more than 50% in my first term. And this is very, very achievable. Right now, the last count of street homeless in New York City is 4,000, but there's a multiplier of 4.5 for every 12 month period. So you're looking at four to 18,000 people on the streets of New York City, and they don't belong there. It's not right for them. It's not right for the city. It's not right for the small businesses that are trying to recover. Now, if we invest in safe haven beds and psych beds and supportive housing, and on the nonprofit workers who actually interface with the street homeless every day and have a more assertive standard of intervention, where if someone is in distress or mentally ill or inebriated or unconscious or, or in need of medical attention, we need to get them to a hospital, get them medical attention, and then bring them to a better environment. But this is something that we should not accept. It's been a leadership and policy failure here in New York. We all can sense it. The fact is we've lived in the city for a long time and we have seen times when street homelessness was not nearly as bad as it is now. We can actually uh, reduce it if we have the right leadership. 
Um, listen, right now we're spending $3.2 billion on homelessness. And I think the issue has been that we're trying to provide services as opposed to providing housing. Um, my plan is to take money from capital projects and actually build permanent housing for homeless individuals. Because if you want to address homelessness, you have to give homeless people addresses. So if we take the money from capital projects, we actually build housing then we don't have to worry about providing services because that's what individuals who are homeless in this city need. First, I know it's a solvable problem. And I know that because I led the strategy for President Obama that dramatically reduced homelessness around the country. We cut street and family homelessness by 25%. We ended veteran homelessness in more than 80 cities and states. So I know it's a solvable problem. But it's outrageous to me as a kid who grew up here who became a public servant because I saw homelessness exploding on our streets in the 70s and 80s, who went to work at a homeless shelter in college and then at the National Coalition for the Homeless. It's outrageous we have a mayor who actually has not done anything about this problem. He's made it worse because we have more homeless people now than any time since the Depression. We can end it if we reimagine our right to shelter in this city as a right to housing, and that's what I would do. I can do it because I am not uh, invested in or indebted to the real estate industry. Um, I am accountable solely to the people that have made it possible for us to get this far in this race, and that is the average New Yorker. Um, I can do it because I'm not afraid to take on the powers that be. I can do it because I have the political and the moral courage to actually prioritize those that have been the most vulnerable and most marginalized throughout the course of history. And I can do it because I'm going to make sure that the city exercises all of its executive powers, both in terms of existing vacant spaces and in terms of existing public land, city land, so that we are prioritizing the establishment and creation of housing for everybody. What makes you a New Yorker? I'm a born and bred New Yorker. Well, I've lived in New York. I lived in New York. I was born here. My lived experiences. I was born and raised here. I raised my children here as a single mom. The love that I spread, the energy that I bring. I moved here when I was 21 years old as a student, and I've been here ever since. What makes me a New Yorker is the fact that I love people. You cut my veins and arteries, I bleed New York. Favorite New York movie? Serpico. Love Al Pacino and the 1970s. Do the right thing, Spike Lee. Taxi. Taxi. Are you talking to me? Yeah. <laughs> that was the name of the movie, that's the favorite line, Taxi. Are Taxi you talking driver. to me? <laughs> Taxi driver, yes. The Godfather? I can give you a play. Thinking about the movie set, uh, I would say Finchers on Broadway would be the play. I like Ghostbusters. It was really funny. Come on, that's good fellas, right? Uh, Good fellas! What are your plans to bring back businesses affected by the pandemic? New York City's economy needs to grow. We have to support small businesses. They are 50% of our private sector employment. A one city permit, blowing up the bureaucracy, making sure that we are supporting them with micro loans, giving them access to the public sphere. But we also have to support art and culture and music because those are the things that brings back our office employees and brings back our tourists. Creating tax incentives, allowing them to hire people and get tax breaks on, those, on that payroll tax, like we were doing with Amazon. Making sure that we reassess property values and cap them so that landlords could pass along the savings. Making sure that every city agency is a friend of an investor, of someone that takes risks in this city. Right now, every city agency is the enemy of every small business and makes it very difficult for them to succeed. A major thing is rent relief. We need as much rent relief as possible for our small businesses in our community. We also need cash assistance for these businesses to be able to bounce back, especially our small mom and pop businesses. And then another thing is basic income, a universal basic income. We've already seen the more disposable income that New Yorkers have, uh, the more that they're going to be spending at our local businesses, right? So that, and then creating a system where, um, a cryptocurrency system where money that is basically can only be spent at local businesses to help curtail some of our sales being going straight to Amazon and these other major corporations that aren't paying taxes in this city. 
One problem that we have in New York City right now is that you have many neighborhoods being taken over by chain restaurants. Starbucks, Dwayne Reed, and Chipotle, they're all good companies, but it's not, they are not what make New York City great. So what I'm proposing to do is to give additional tax incentive to small businesses so that small businesses from everywhere can come to New York City and thrive here. We must also place limits on chain retail in historic neighborhoods. That way our mom and pop stores across the city have a chance to survive. We also must keep in mind that it's our small businesses that employ our immigrants. So it's particularly important to help our small businesses. And if we get people back to the city and then offer tax subsidies to small businesses, then we can make New York City um, an even better place to live. My plan is called the greatest, most inclusive comeback in the history of New York City. 500,000 jobs, go big, go small, go forward. Let me focus on the go small, which is the small businesses, which are responsible for half of the people who work in New York City. We need to make certain that we invest in the small businesses. I'll take in my plan 50,000 jobs in small businesses, make certain that we take care of half of their wages for one year, waive all fees for one year, and see if we can't get a holiday on their credit FICA scores beginning in January of 2020 so that they're not unduly penalized by COVID, which is out of their control. And also, I want to make certain that we invite small businesses. I'm going to have a deputy mayor for small businesses who comes in and, and cuts out the bureaucracy, makes it work more efficiently, adds technology so we can have one-stop shopping for all those small businesses, but focus on the small businesses. And we also need to focus on the minority and women-owned businesses. New York City spent $22.5 billion in 2020. 82% of the MWBEs got zero. And so we need to focus on that. Mets or Yankees? Mets. Mets. Permanent purgatory. Yankees. Yankees. Come on. Favorite New Yorker, living or dead? Mayor LaGuardia, one of the great mayors of the city. He brought the city back from a lot of problems. Eleanor Roosevelt. David Dinkins. Uh, I mean, that, that's a tough one. There's so, I mean, so many incredible people. Um, you know, the name that pops in the head for me is Alexander Hamilton. I mean, he did a lot for the city, that's for sure. His biography by Chernow was fascinating. Is Toni Morrison a New Yorker? I think Toni Morrison was a New Yorker. But I'm gonna say living, Right now, uh, Lin Manuel Miranda, and that's not pandering. Lin Manuel Miranda. Uh, my favorite New Yorker was Shirley Chisholm, who was not just unbossed and unbought, she was unapologetically a black woman who showed up for people and community every single day and in every single way. The pigeon man. I've always wanted the pigeons on me, I, pigeons following me. The pigeon man, I'm amazed, the pigeon man. What is one thing you could do to save the MTA if you had control over it? The one thing I would do for the MTA, if I had control over it, would be to have a digital transformation of the MTA, have the signal so it works better, have digital signs in all, all, the, all the train stations so people know when the trains are actually coming and have those be accurate, but also have those be reflected in above ground information where people know what's happening with the trains and when to expect them. Well, number one, I would make it free. Uh, and really encourage uh, everyone to use it. I have a Metro car and I know the importance of public transportation. I will ensure that it's a free system and those who could afford to pay more in taxes will pay more in taxes and to have this great lifeblood of our city. I would take government out of it. I would quite honestly want to privatize the MTA. I think that government doesn't know how to do business and certainly doesn't know how to manage business. So I think the MTA is just in the wrong hands. If it were privatized, it would probably turn a profit every single year. Well, look, the mayor shouldn't control the MTA, but the mayor should weigh in on the MTA. We got four appointees. We send a billion dollars to the MTA. And part of what I'm gonna do is get my seat at the table and talk about how we can bring our transit system back. The MTA needs funding. We need to have congestion pricing, and we need to attract people back onto the subway, which means they need to feel safe on the subway. Let's just wait for the train. I know, that was a little weird, right? That was weird. Like, the ghosts of the train were like, yes, what are you going to do for me now?
they approve, please put funding in. What is the most overrated thing about New York City? I think the most overrated thing about New York City are all the fancy restaurants. I love all the restaurants, but there is no way that the price for those restaurants justifies you know, what, what you get. I am much happier eating in my neighborhood restaurants, going to my neighborhood bars and really experiencing things where people who own the stores are actually the ones who operate them. The New Yorkers are friendly. New Yorkers aren't friendly. Are you kidding? We actually are. You could be on fire in the middle of the street. Some New Yorkers wouldn't urinate on you to put out the flames. We like to move quickly, but um, we are friendly. I don't think anything is really overrated. Uh, I think it's all fabulous. If you could move Gracie Mansion from East End Avenue, where would you move it? If I could move Gracie Mansion, or be right into the heart of the South Bronx. Unlike the other candidates, I'll make good use of Gracie Mansion. I have 15 rescue cats. I live in a 320 square foot apartment with my wife, Nancy, with one turlet. It's a lot of heavy lifting of litter. I need more space for the rescue cats from the shelter and the rescue dogs I can keep in the yard at Gracie Mansion. Brooklyn, central Brooklyn, because Brooklyn is the seat of the universe. Uh, Mother Gaston Boulevard in the heart of Brownsville. If we lift up Brownsville and the areas like Brownsville, we're going to lift up this entire city. So I will rotate it. Uh, Livonia Avenue in the Bronx, South Jamaica, Queens, all of those communities that have been left behind and betrayed. Oh, I would move it to two blocks from my mother so that I could stay close to her. Where's that? In Park Slope in Brooklyn. If I could move Gracie Mansion, I would move it to give it to the residents of NYCHA. And one of my plans is to turn NYCHA into mansions. People's surroundings determine what their future becomes. Your zip code be determines what your future becomes. If you're seeing crack pipes and all of these things around you in your neighborhood, then that becomes your reality. But if we give these folks mansions, if we give them the highest level of art, the highest level of architecture, imagine what test scores will look like. Imagine what the neighborhood will look like. Imagine what family structures will look like. So for me, the idea is to take this from the establishment, take this mansion from the elite and duplicate that and give it to the people of the city. I think it could float in the Hudson. That would be a nice, and then we could travel to the different boroughs. Why should we trust you? Because when you wore a bulletproof vest for 22 years, protecting children and families of this city, I have a record to examine. Others don't have a record. If you want to know the type of mayor I'm going to be, look at the type of man I have been. Because I am a mother who is running, coming from a history that is about pulling people together and uniting them, but also speaking truth and honestly about what is broken and what we must solve together and how that lifts all our boats. I understand trust, and I know trust is something which has to be earned, it can't be assumed. And in a city the size of New York City, trust is data. The current city's um, regime around data maintains that the city's data is, is actually private. It's not owned by the people, it's owned by the city government. And I think that's wrong. I think fundamentally the city's data is the people's data and we have to make that transparent except by exception. And so under my administration, I would show that I deserve trust because I would make that data transparent. I would automate that data. I would enable everybody to see it and be able to analyze it. I would present it in a way that is user friendly because I want people to understand what's working. But even more importantly, I think we all need to look at the things that aren't working and work together to understand why it's not working and how we can actually make it better. I've been there in every battle over the last 30 years uh, as a lifelong New Yorker. I served in the state assembly, was mo one of the most progressive legislators there. As borough president, I did things that no one thought we could do on, on delivering food and healthy food and community-based planning. As controller, I, I divested $4 billion in fossil fuel, the largest pension fund divestment uh, fighting climate change, divested from private prisons and guns. Uh, I used my office to do very big things, but also protect the retirement of our seniors to make sure that the office uh, was accountable to Mayor de Blasio and held City Hall to a, the highest ethical standards. Even during the agents of the city and the corruption scandals, I was there every day holding them accountable. You know, in my neighborhood and in my church, my word is my bond. I've never once breached my word and don't intend to start now. You should trust me because I am you. 
I have a lot of the lived experience that everyday New Yorkers are, are going through in this city. And I'm not in this race because I have political aspirations, I have aspirations for celebrity or fame. I'm in this race because like most New Yorkers, I'm tired. I'm tired of us seeing, seeing us build all of these amazing, beautiful, you know, new developments and more homeless people on the street. I'm tired of seeing people struggling, you know, people on food lines trying to survive in this city. I'm ready to bring back a real, true New York City that's inclusive of everyone and gives everybody the opportunity to be okay. So, you know, I'm doing it for the right reasons. I'm doing it from my heart, and I know that working together that we'll be able to truly create change. And people should be able to trust that with me. Why should you trust Curtis Lee? You shouldn't trust Curtis Lee. You should trust no politician. Hold my feet and hands to the fire. Show me with your arms how much you want to be mayor.